Hello everyone, this is Giacomo with STL Tones. Welcome to the first in a series of videos where we'll explore Ampub, its features and its sound. In this initial episode, we are starting with something like Ampub 101, an introductory guide to this fantastic software. Let's begin with the I.O. setup. We click this button and in this menu, we have to be sure to select the correct ASIO driver of our audio interface. This is really important. Then we can set the input and we have to set the input to where we are connecting our instrument into the audio interface. In my case, it's the input number five. Then we can set the output, so where we want Ampub's output to go. In my case, it's output nine and 10. Uh, please remember that when using Ampub in any DAW and not in standalone as I'm doing right now, these settings should be adjusted on the DAW. Then we find the sample rate and the audio buffer size. Please remember that the buffer size value has to be set in your interface control panel. Of course, lower values reduce latency at the expense of a higher CPU usage, while higher values decrease CPU usage, but of course result in more latency. So you have to find the best setting for your setup. Moving on, we can close the I.O. setup panel. You can click this icon to recite the plugin in steps, or you can use the bottom right corner to do it freely. Before anything else, let's talk about the input level located at the bottom left of the interface. Properly setting this level is crucial for Ampub to work correctly. The optimal level is as high as possible without clipping the AD converter. Let's say you are unsure, well, Ampub has a pretty useful function, the input level listener. You can click the icon next to the input pot you can select your pickup type, in my case it's a medium output, but you can choose low, medium or high output. And you can play for 5-10 seconds as written in the instruction here on the screen, and the software automatically will set the correct level. Let's test it. As you can see, Hampub set minus 4.1 dB as my optimum level working with this guitar and this instance of Ampub. So please carefully repeat this step to set the correct input level for every guitar that you have. I'm sure you have a lot of them. Please remember this step is really vital to get the best from Ampub, so dedicate it the necessary time. Now, in the bottom right corner is the output control and uh, let's jump back to the left side of the panel, uh, we find the gate. So the gate is useful for removing background noises, he's hum if present, so turning it clockwise reduces noise, but be cautious, a high gate value cuts sustain on long notes, so set it very carefully. Next we find the tuner with the indicator in the center, I'm sure you're pretty familiar with the tuner, and we can find the reference value on the right, a button to mute the plugin while tuning on the left, and a pot to adjust sensitivity for specific instruments. We can close this window and let's delve into the four fundamental sections of Ampub. So, stone boxes, amplifier section, cabinet and microphone options, and post effects. In the center we have the selected model with a very realistic graphic that precisely reproduces all the controls of the amplifier that we can interact with. As you can see I can modify, and I can um, use all the pots, I can do whatever I want if, for example, I choose an amp with some switches, I can engage or disengage switches, I can do whatever I want with all the graphic interface of the amplifier. If I modified some settings and I want to revert them back to their original values, I can double click the pot, like in this way for example, to do that. At the top I have the name of the selected amplifier and by clicking on it I can access the amplifier selection menu. As you can see, the choice is very, very extensive, ranging from vintage style amplifiers to more modern ones, from those with low gain to those with a lot of gain. So the selection is really huge and think and remember that Every month there's a new addition, so this collection is always evolving, leading maybe to an infinite number of amplifiers. Another thing to remember, let's say that I want to um, open up, for example, the 
hot vet doctor just to change the amplifier as in the plexi as in the hot vet doctor 103 for example we can change the input socket by clicking on another one in this way because uh, ampub is really representing the original and the real amplifier circuit so we can change the input socket resulting of course in a different sound like in the original amplifier but we can also jump inputs by clicking again on the correctly inserted jack cycling for example i mean low brill by cycling through the available options that we obviously see reported in the graphic interface let's see jump one jump two if we were on the high normal click again and new jump options so this is an amazing 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 option now let's explore the stone box section with four slots for pedals placed in front of the amplifier the fourth is visible by scrolling right as you can see there is a scroll bar on the top and we can scroll and we have four slots by clicking on select we can choose the pedal and as you can see the choice is very extensive here too if we want to change the order for example let's say that i'm going to put a basic compressor and then a ball drive and then uh, a digital flanger let's say that i want to change the order of these pedals it's very easy just click on the swap button and then click on the new desired position it's really really easy i can do that how many times i want of course now let's move to the cabinet section. Here we can find many options in these two available slots. So we have two separate slots. We can choose the cabinet, of course, for example, this Bogart SLV30, but we can choose the microphone too. This microphone is gonna mic that speaker, for example, the Dynamic 57. Now that we have chose the microphone, we can freely position the microphone through the graphical interface. How cool is that and how easy is that? In the central section, we have a series of settings that allows us to sculpt the sound of the cabinet section even more, such as the distance from the cone, the microphone angle, the room, the high pass and low pass controls, and the resonance. Additionally, these controls can be linked between the two slots to speed up our workflow. For example, let's say that I want to cut everything below 65 Hz, I can link the two slots on high pass and I can set it. So easy. At the size of the speakers, we can find the respective volumes. Okay, one and two. And then we have the button to invert the face, one for each side of the cabinet module, of course. In the up center zone of the cabinet module, we can find the mix mode and the pan mode. So we have the slider that allows us to mix the two slots in mix mode, or in pan mode, we can freely pan each side of the cabinet model. This is very, very cool and convenient. At the bottom, we also have the possibility to load third-party IRs. We can click this button and load whatever IR we want. Of course, all these options up here are available when working with amp ups caps last but not least we can find an equalizer for each slot we can access it through this button and as you can see we have a classic parametric equalizer at our disposal where we can adjust of course the gain the center frequency and the q which is the bell width having this additional function available for both slots is another really cool help in quickly achieving the sound that we have in mind now let's move to the effects section. You find four slots with the same logic as the song section. The choices are extensive here too, providing plenty of room for experimentation. For example, I can load uh, digital delay, I can load uh, digital reverb, and I can load um, siren chorus, and of course I can swap the order of this pedal as we previously seen on the stone boxes section please remember that these sections are in order of routing so the signal goes into the stomp section then into the amplifier section then into the cabinet section then into the effect section and then to the output we can also individually bypass the very sections if needed by clicking further on the currently selected section like this this option is maybe useful if you want to use some amp up sections along with other third-party plugins 
this might be useful in some cases. Now since we've discussed routing, let's address another crucial setting, mpubs routing. We can find the routing up here in the top bar and we have three settings, mono, mono stereo and stereo. In mono, the entire chains remain mono. In mono to stereo, the chain is mono until there's a device supporting mono to stereo processing, typically delays and reverbs. The signal then becomes stereo, so after hitting these devices becomes stereo and you can hear, for example, the delay in stereo. In stereo, the entire chain is in stereo, that means that all the sections are internally doubled to process the signal in stereo. This mode is of course the most CPU intensive. Please remember that if you open amp up on a DAW track and only see the mono option, it's because you are on a mono track, so you need a stereo track for be able to activate the other modes. On the other hand, if you're using Ampub standalone like me in this moment and see only the mono option, it's because only one output is activated in the I.O. section. You need to activate two to be able to see the other modes. Now let's jump to the left side of the top bar and there's the preset section. Presets are contained in banks, with each bank being a container for different presets. Think of banks as organizers to catalog presets, for example by setlist, genre or amplifier type, it's really up to you. So we can click this button and we can open up the preset selection. We can now navigate, for example, in my bank, the Giacomo Pasquale bank, and choose whatever preset we want. Uh, now we can tweak the preset in whatever way we want, and then we have the possibility, of course, to manage these changes that we have made to the preset. For example, I can click on the preset button, I can create a new bank, I can call it, for example, test bank, I can click OK. We can now click to this button that says save as a new preset in other bank and we can save it into test bank. We can change name if you want, so test preset. We can click OK and the preset is stored in the new location. We have some other options too. So for example, we can save the preset in the same location where it is at the moment. We can save uh, as a new preset in the current bank, for example, we can name in the new preset number two. Uh, we can restore if we made some edits, whatever edit we did on the preset. We can click this button and we can restore the preset to its original settings. This is another very convenient feature. We can edit the name of the preset and we can uh, type in the new name. We can delete the preset and we have two buttons for copy and paste presets into the various banks. As you can see, preset management is truly versatile, designed to accommodate all your needs. Now let's move a bit to the right and we can find the tempo section, where you can manually set the BPM or use the top tempo function to set it. In a though, this section is absent because the tempo automatically syncs with the project. Even further to the right, you'll see the button for activation check and the button to access the manual. Closing off, let's briefly talk about MIDI found in the bottom bar. Ampub is designed to be fully controlled by MIDI, both in the studio and live. So let's go in the bottom bar, we can click the MIDI button and here it is, the MIDI window. Please don't be scared about this, it's very, very easy. To let you know how easy it is, let's close this window and let's approach MIDI in another way. Please know that by right-clicking any amp-up control using MIDI Learn, you can easily set up MIDI controls. For example, I can add uh, another pedal, the Ball Drive S1, I can click the right button and I have MIDI Learn Preset and MIDI Learn Global. So the distinction is between a global and preset. In global, you assign the control for any preset. Essentially, of course, it's a global setting. For the preset, the assignment is saved only in that specific preset. For example, let's try to assign the on-off of this pedal via MIDI. First of all, we have to connect a MIDI controller to our computer, in my case it's a Morningstar MC6 Pro, then we have to go to the I.O. setup and we have to be sure that our MIDI controller is recognized by the system, as in my case Morningstar MC6 Pro, and we have to active the MIDI input. Now we are ready to make the assignment. So let's right click the on-off button of the pedal, I can click the MIDI Learn Global 
feature because I want to control the on off status of the first lot in the stomp section for every preset. I can click the button, the MIDI learn window appears and now I only have to press the MIDI button on my controller. For example, I can hit pedal A, this switch on my MC6 Pro controller, the window goes away and now I can toggle the pedal on off. I can repeat, for example, this thing with this other pedal, right click, MIDI learn global and I can hit this other pedal once again I can freely toggle the on off status of the pedal thing that you can also connect volume pedals MIDI volume pedals uh, for example I may connect a standard volume pedal in the expression ports of my MIDI controller uh, so I can control the wah pedal the volume pedal I can also maybe if I would like to I will be able to control the pots of an amp right click MIDI learn so uh, we have really a lot of MIDI options and please remember that there's already a details MIDI video on the STL Tones YouTube channel that I invite you to watch to explore all these MIDI features in detail. Thanks for watching this video, I think we made a pretty wide introduction to AmpUp covering all the basic functions and sections and settings and whatever. So if you enjoyed or found this video useful, please click the like button, leave a comment and activate the notification bell to stay updated on new videos. Thanks for being with us again, our journey into AmpUp is just beginning. See you in the next video.